Dear parents and carers, welcome to our first virtual information event. In this presentation, you will find a wide range of information to ensure that you are in the best possible position to support your child in achieving their best at school. I've been really impressed with how Year 11s have shown great resilience this academic year. And although we've got a tough few months ahead of us, with the right support, I know that they will rise to the challenge. Hi Year 11s, it's Mr Abbott here. Um, I just first of all want to start by saying how immensely proud we are of you as a class, the class of 2021. Um, I know 2020 has been uh, an unusual year, an incredible year in so many ways, uh, but you're an incredible bunch of young people and for that I want to say how proud, how immensely um, proud we are of you in everything that you do. Fundamentally at our core, our values, are a set of principles that we want to install in you and, and make sure that you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis and if you are then hopefully you'll have every success that you desire. So the, the word core, challenge yourself every day to be your best, it's about making sure that every day you have that motivation, have every day that you have that desire and that grit and determination to want to do your very very best in every lesson and every opportunity. And for that we do want to make sure that there are opportunities created for you both in school and outside of school. Take those opportunities, take them whilst you can. Build positive relationships, okay? We, we have a key word there, respect, and I think this year group has shown that they have incredible respect for one another, incredible respect for their environment, and incredible respect for their learning. And that's none more so important than when you think about all the teachers that are putting on interventions, all the teachers that are putting on additional bits and pieces for you to support you and benefit you, and hopefully help you build that success that you desire. And finally, that ethos of excellence having a really strong and disciplined work ethic. Things haven't been easy. Some of you have had to isolate. Some of you have had to work from home. Some of you have had to work remotely. And you need that in, inner sort of desire, that inner discipline to want to work really hard. And from that per perspective, uh, we are incredibly proud of you. I just want to finish on my segment uh, with this quote. Ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. And I think those are two really important points. We're all able, we're all capable, we all have things inside us that we're able to do. But to take us to the next step is about starting to really show that motivation, show that determination, that grit, that desire to want to do things that bit better, to achieve that bit beyond what we're capable of. So really pushing ourselves over the next few months is going to be important. And we want to make sure that's balanced. We don't want to push you so hard that you feel that you're going to burn out. But equally, we want to make sure that you're focused and in tune with the fact that your exams are coming up. We don't know what they're going to look like yet, but we need to be prepared for them. And having motivation to be successful is a really important part of that. All the very best, Year 11. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to our senior leadership team and two other key support teams inside school. Firstly, we have Miss Hillman, our head teacher, Mr. Abbott and Mr. Gallupcher, who lead on the quality of education, Miss Close, who leads on behaviour, Mr. Hutchins, our safeguarding lead, Miss Ardurakis, who leads on data and pupil progress, Miss Elmi, who leads on pupil leadership and parental engagement. Our SEND team is led by Miss Gardner and Miss Smith. We also have our pastoral support team, led by Miss Austin. Mr Travis leads on punctuality and Miss Warden, our homeschool worker, oversees midterm admissions and also monitors uniform and equipment. Miss Blackwood manages the IEU and related detentions.
This is Dr. Kazanidis from Heathcote School. I'm a teacher of maths. I'm usually at the maths office during my free time, but my normal classroom is at H126. I'm the form tutor of 11-1. I would like to share to all of you some words of wisdom from a Hungarian mathematician, Paul Halmos, where he said, that the only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. I hope that each student of Heathcote School will take this as some guidance to, be, to inspire them to develop their skills in maths and make good progress. Hello, you 11. I'm the form tutor of 11-2 and my name's Mr. Leeper. Uh, in case uh, you weren't aware, I'm actually the teacher of computing or computer science as it's known and here is uh, our co-form tutor of 11-2. Miss Ahmed. Hello you're 11. My name is Miss Ahmed. I am a maths teacher here at Heathcote School and I'm also the form tutor for 11-2. Um, I just wanted to let you know that in case you wanted to get in touch with us our contact details can be found below. So if anyone has any questions or wants to come and have a little conversation, you know, me and Miss Ahmed can be found in different locations. I'm usually constantly hanging around in H110. And I'm usually in H122. This is the language corridor and when you and where you guys are usually based. So yes. Year 11, all of you have been working so hard. You're so amazing. Each and every one of you have been extremely resilient. This year has been probably the most challenging year ever, if anything, but I just want to let you know that we all believe in you. Keep going. And as this little puppy is doing right here, hang in there. You got this. Hello, 11 threes. I'm Mrs. Altaf. I'm your form tutor. I'm available for you whenever you need me. I, as you all know, I teach you maths. You can find me in the maths office whenever you need any help and any support. Now I'll hand over to Mrs. Nawaz Khan. Hello, um, I'm also your t form teacher and I've been your teacher since year nine. And I've seen you grow from year nine all the way up to year 11. You've been absolutely fantastic all the way through. Um, you all know that I also teach maths. Um, I have responsibility for some A-level maths as well, so if anyone of you considers doing A-level maths, come and see me and I'll give you all the help and advice. And anything else you need help with, just come and see me at any time. Hi Year 11s, my name is Mrs Hyde and I am a maths teacher and the co-form tutor of 11-4. I'm also the Key Stage 3 coordinator of maths, which means I'm in charge of the progress for Year 7 and Year 8 maths. Hi Elevens, my name is Miss Olga. I am also a maths teacher in the department. I am also the co-form tutor with Miss Hyde for 11 fours. We just wanted to give you a very quick message just to say well done for everything you've achieved so far. You've had to put up with so much this year group more than any other year group has before you and you're all doing so well so just keep doing what you're doing and we know you will do brilliantly well. Hello Year 11, Mr Wiggins here. Uh, most of you already know me but uh, just for clarity, I am a maths teacher and I can help any of you with any maths related queries. Um, if you do have any other queries or problems and you want to come find me, I'm usually in the maths office just down the corridor or even sometimes in the room next to the library. Um, you could also send me an email. The email is on this slide. Hi Year 11, my name is Ms Jacobs, I am the form tutor for 11-6, I am the second in department for maths so, and I oversee Year 9, 10 and 11 classes. I'm also the person to email if your login for maths watch doesn't work. Just wanted to wish you all the best for the upcoming year and I know that you guys will be really great. Uniform expectations are as they were last year. Black leather shoes, all, all black leather trainers, no hoop or drop earrings, no excessively large studs, no rings or bracelets, no visible necklaces, and certainly no diamond studs. Hairstyles should be suitably formal. Significant hair colourings or shavings of hair, including patterns, is not permitted. 
no false eyelashes or any acrylic nails. These are all considered to be banned items in, and you peoples will be sanctioned for this. Ties and lanyards are compulsory and must be worn at all times. Here are some important information during break and lunch. It is important to remember the following. Each pupil of Heathcote School can bring in a healthy snack to eat at break time in the courtyard area, as well as a large bottle of water. May bring packed lunch, but this will be eaten in the canteen with school pupils. We'll sit in the designated canteen seat, and at lunchtime, may have an opportunity to use the toilet, then go for lunch, and then have free time in the courtyard. Okay, here are some important reminders during break and lunch. It is important to remember the following. Each pupil of Heathcote School can bring in a healthy snack to eat at break time in the school courtyard area as well as a large bottle of water may bring packed lunch but this will be eaten in the canteen with school pupils will sit in designated canteen seat and at lunch time may have an opportunity to use the toilet then go for lunch and then have free time in the courtyard so yeah, we just wanted to say a few words on the expectations of behaviour we have as all teachers around the school. One of them would be to be ready for your learning by simply being at the right place, the right time, showing positive attitude constantly and having all equipment ready for your lesson. The second one would be to show respect towards everyone's right to learn and feel safe. And what, what I mean by that is, is simply by respecting everyone's opinion during lesson and also making your own contributions in a very respectful manner and that way you create a very good positive classroom environment as well as positive relationships and last of all take responsibility for yourself and your learning environment at all times so taking responsibility for your own behavior is completely paramount it's really important that you guys understand how your own behaviour affects your ability to learn and it also affects the ability of others to learn in your presence. So if your behaviour isn't as it should be, then that's going to have a massive impact on how you're going to be accessing the work that's given to you in lessons. And at this like crucial point of your learning, this close to your exams, it's more important than ever that every single minute of lesson time, you're accessing learning. So basically all your behaviour needs to be geared to getting every single drop of education possible out of Heathcote before you leave, putting you in the best possible position to get the best GCSEs you can before you leave us. You're all doing so well this year already. Just keep doing what you're doing um, and you'll all do well. Okay, guys, I just want to talk to you now about the importance of being punctual to lesson. Every minute counts yeah you really need to strive to be on time and this is why if you're just two minutes late to every lesson you might think oh that's only two minutes but believe it or not over across one year just one year this adds up to six and a half days of school that's 32 hours of learning lost it sounds a lot doesn't it but now if you look some people are even regularly four minutes late and think that's okay but that's 13 days of school 65 hours of learning even six minutes late, some people even get up to that level. That's 98 hours of learning. It's getting quite serious at this point. But if you're eight minutes late, you're now 26 days of school lost. Not That's not going to help you guys. This is year 11 now. This is the time to focus, the time to not miss any school. So let's make sure if you want to get your grades, which I know everyone does here, let's make sure we're on time, ready to learn, ready to succeed. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of attendance and how massively it impacts upon um, attainment and your actual GCSEs. Since Year 7, we have been hammering home um, that attendance is incredibly important and actually that you need to be um, at school for more than 95% of your lessons. And on this slide, I've tried to summarise some of the key information and how um, a lack of 95% attendance can actually affect your final grades. 
Studies have shown that um, 80% of students that actually manage 100% attendance over their school life will achieve at least five grade fours or better. Whereas it also has shown that less than 50% of pupils will achieve this if they only achieve approximately 90% attendance. This then gets even worse, it drops down to 35% for those that are actually not in school for 90% of the time. This is really, really concerning. That is over twice the difference between those that attend 90% of the time and those that attend 100% of the time. The gap between 90% and 100% may not seem very large, but we are seeing massive change in GCSE results. Why is this the case? We could put this down to several reasons. Um, firstly, we could just consider the sheer amount of time you're actually missing if you are in school for less than 90% of the time. If this is the case, you will miss a month of school every year. Now, in just in maths alone, that would be a whole topic being missed out. That is a whole topic with zero teacher support and you having to find the time to actually catch up with all that work. Miss school time is incredibly precious. It's not just time for pupils to practice their work, but it is time for dedicated contact with their subject specialist teachers. This means that teachers can actually unpick misconceptions and guide them through their learning. Unfortunately, when pupils miss their work and have to catch this up, this process cannot happen in its natural way. As such, misconceptions can be embedded in pupils' learning and unfortunately that can then lead to problems later on in their actual examinations. On top of this, um, as pupils go to their next lessons, often these lessons require knowledge from prior learning and if the prior learning doesn't exist or there are misconceptions from that, that then impedes them even when they are in school. So those small um, time periods which they miss have massive impact on the rest of school life. So even if you are only missing one or two percent of school or one or two days, actually the effect on the rest of the school life is actually quite dramatic. In summary, attendance is one of the most important factors in student attainment. Without good attendance, students tend to do worse in their final examinations and they find it far more stressful preparing for those examinations. The time that they get with their teachers is far more productive than time spent by themselves practicing. It is really important that pupils have the maximum time possible with their subject specialist teachers their subject specialist teachers will then be able to properly prepare them for both examinations and for the wider world that awaits them. This year we'll be using Google Classroom quite a bit to access homework, to access live lessons. On the next two slides I've actually just got um, some information that might help you to find where to go to find your classwork and also how to access these live lessons from both a laptop and also from a phone. Hello, my name's Mr. Byer. I'm the director of sixth form at Heathcote and one of the assistant head teachers. Over this presentation, I hope you find lots of information about what the sixth form at Heathcote has to offer and how we support our pupils onto their next steps and amazing destinations, and also how we can support you to apply to the sixth form, which is an online process this year. As you can see here, we're hugely proud of some individually outstanding achievements uh, from last year's Year 13 cohort. Um, and we supported not only our A-level students onto some top destinations, uh, Imperial University, studying medicine uh, at St Andrews University, and some on gap years who are now uh, undertaking their Oxford and Cambridge interviews as they uh, look to progress from their wonderful collection of A-stars they achieved last year. 
but also at the bottom are BTEC business students who all achieved Distinction Star DD, which is the equivalent of A Star AA at A level. And some of those have also gone on to start in the world of work at university um, and are also progressing to great things. The final thing on this slide is that we also offered two scholarships last year from the Reading Foundation and they were awarded £250 each to recognise the great work and the commitment they'd shown during the year. So there are lots of ways that Heathcote Sixth Form offer support and guidance to those destinations, whether it's apprenticeships or universities. And also there are some financial supports available as well. We also have a bespoke partnership with Leicester University where one student will be eligible for £2,000 scholarship. So hopefully this is a, a clue of the things that we're hoping that all our pupils will achieve in the sixth form and they can go on to lead successful and happy future lives. This slide really echoes uh, the previous slide, um, but gives you a little bit more detail uh, in terms of our overall picture, not just the individual successes. Um, you can see that 40% of those who went on to university went to really top destinations, which we think now more than ever in the uncertain world ahead is, is really important. And you can see from our previous Ofsted report that the careers guidance information, employment opportunities uh, were really beneficial and more students than average went on to higher education or to apprenticeships. So so um, we've got a really great team with Miss Burnett, who's based in the sixth form, to offer that uh, support and guidance with lots of um, work experience links and opportunities to help pupils develop during their two years in the sixth form. We know in the sixth form that success isn't going to happen by itself and that part of being a successful university applicant or apprenticeship applicant is building a, a student experience that is beyond those three subjects or one BTEC subject studied. So we're really keen to embed a beyond the formal curriculum a wider offer and as you can see here that includes lots of different things to do with trips and expeditions, things like the National Career Service, the Duke of Edinburgh Award, um, leadership opportunities through the Ambassador Programme which is being led by Miss Elmy this year. Uh, we've got other enrichment opportunities like a thriving debate club our bar mock trial competition last year took us to the, the final uh, at Snaresbrook Crown Court where we lost out to the national finalists by just one point. We also have um, Sutton Trust Social Mobility Foundation links uh, and lots of other enrichment opportunities for essay competition, attending lecture series and so on. And all of that we hope builds a really high set of aspirations for whatever pathway our pupils choose to go on to, um, whether that's Oxbridge and medicine, different career opportunities, um, and Mr Dolan's work with Gardner and Theobald for example give us loads of positive links with the construction industry as well. And finally, we're looking always to make sure we support the well-being of our pupil community and the wider community as well, looking at fundraising opportunities, charity events, um, and of course we've got access to the counselling service in school as well, um, and making sure that our pupils are, are well guided in everything that they do. One of the benefits of staying on at Heathcote Sixth Form rather than trying somewhere new is that the foundation of the, the lessons and the learning is also already built upon relationships between staff and pupils that already know one another. As you can see from these quotes, uh, staff here really do go above and beyond to build those positive relationships and to offer support and guidance for all our students. Uh, and we know, we know them really well, we know the journey they've been on and will continue to go on uh, to support them with their next steps. Additionally, as you're looking for maybe a fresh start in the sixth form and a new opportunity, we have our own uh, separate building as part of the main school. And I think that really offers us a slightly different identity and an opportunity to mix with new pupils as they come in from other schools. So we aim to have as many Heathcote applicants as possible this year. We hope that there is a course for all of you to apply to, but we also recognise that there is a, an importance in mixing and meeting and socialising with new students from other places. And we hope that that mix of having uh, lessons and opportunities with other students is also something really positive and will help give that sense of a new opportunity whilst also building on the positives of what we already know about your sons and daughters. 
in terms of next steps, uh, I really hope that you'll be able to log on and see the resources of our virtual open evening uh, this year. And on the 10th this Thursday is also when applications will open live online as well. So each department has made a subject specific page uh, and you'll be able to see some of the resources and the curriculum on offer for the A-level and BTEC courses. Um, additionally, um, we'll be inviting back some of our alumni as well as current year 13 and 12 pupils to take part in a pupil panel that will be happening live on Zoom on the 10th as well. And I think it's testament to those positive relationships and the fact that we really uh, care for pupils' destinations and next steps, even on gap years and at university, that they are coming back on a Thursday in December to participate in the wider school community and talk to parents about the opportunities that they had in the sixth form. Following that, we'll be offering uh, Year 11s the chance to sign up for three subjects as a taster day, which will be happening in January. And those option choices will be coming out soon after the open evening. Um, and finally, after that, uh, a little bit more thinking time and processing about what those next steps might be. On January the 22nd, our application deadline uh, is for all our applications to be done online and then once we've got all of those in and we've looked at our external applications as well we will go through the interview and guidance process to make sure that all our students have uh, opted for the right courses the right pathways that will lead them hopefully to join us in the sixth form and to some really successful next steps We have three main pathways on offer in the sixth form. Uh, we have the full A-level pathway for which you'll need five grade fives as a minimum, but lots of individual subjects require a six in the required subject in order to get onto the A-level course. We also offer a mixture of A-level and BTEC, and that's worked really successfully this year with BTEC Business and the PCP, Professional Construction Practice course, to combine those business skills with the more creative uh, side and we're trying to increase that offer next year as well. We then offer two full level three extended diploma courses that's in BTEC Business and BTEC Sport and finally a level two City and Guilds construction course which sits alongside anyone needing to retake English and Maths and offers a really practical pathway into the trades uh, with Mr Edwards teaching them about uh, plumbing, plastering, bricklaying and so on. Uh, so we hope we've got a really good range of courses on offer but please do familiarise yourself with the individual subject requirements on the prospectus and on our website. And finally, as you can see on our website, if you go to the Sixth Form Admissions page, uh, joining us in 2021, there'll be a section on the website where you can download our prospectus, which goes through entrance requirements in a bit more detail and the curriculum on offer. So please do take a look online for any more detail or don't hesitate to contact me uh, at the school and I can go through any more information about your son or daughter's application uh, in person. Thanks and I really do hope to see as many applications this year as possible. Hi I'm Miss Bennett and I work in the careers team at Heathcote. This presentation is just to give you a little bit of information about the careers programme at Heathcote um, and it's a programme of events tailored to each stage of our pupils learning journey so that's from year seven when they join us and they start to think about careers and skills needed in the world of work and just just getting to know those ideas all the way through to years 12 and 13 when they may be making choices about employment apprenticeships or going off to university So as you can see on this slide, Year 11 have some decisions to make about what to do after they finish secondary school. Um, government guidance states that they need to be in some form of education or training until they're 18. Um, so the options are um, to remain at Heathcote 6th form, to look at a college or possibly an apprenticeship. Um, the GCSE results do play a big part in this so in terms of what they go on to study next that will often be decided by their GCSE results um, so for example A levels and other level 3 courses will want them to have um, five or more grade 9 to 5s 
um, and then if for example you want to study a science you may need your GCSE in science to be higher um, so what we suggest is that students at this stage start making some plans about you know what ideally they'd like to do but also have some ideas of, of what they might call their backup plan or if if the grades don't come out quite as they expect um, what what they may choose to do instead So as you can see on this slide, Year 11 have some decisions to make about what to do after they finish secondary school. Um, government guidance states that they need to be in some form of education or training until they're 18. Um, so the options are um, to remain at Heathcote Sixth Form, to look at a college or possibly an apprenticeship. Um, the GCSE results do play a big part in this so in terms of what they go on to study next that will often be decided by their GCSE results um, so for example A levels and other level 3 courses will want them to have um, 5 or more grade 9 to 5s um, and then if for example you want to study a science you may need your GCSE in science to be higher um, so what we suggest is that students at this stage start making some plans about you know what ideally they'd like to do but also have some ideas of, of what they might call their backup plan or if if the grades don't come out quite as they expect um, what what they may choose to do instead So as I said on the last slide, depending on GCSE results, that that kind of signifies the next level of education that students can go on to. Um, so um, in terms of A-levels, they're a level 3 qualification. So you can see here that the entry requirements are generally a minimum of 5 grade, 5 to 9 or above, including maths and English. Um, there's a new qualification that came out in September 2020 called T-levels. Um, basically, a T-level is a vocational qualification with... Um, 80% classroom based learning and 20% on industry placement. It's the equivalent of three A levels, so it is level three um, and it sits alongside A levels, but as I say, it's a more vocational route. Um, entry requirements for those courses do depend on the further education provision, so you need to check specific details. Um, so prospectuses, websites, etc. Um, the same with vocational qualifications. Now at college, the um, vocational qualifications, the levels are normally a level one entry level and a level two and three. Um, so depending on exam results, students usually have an option to go in at the appropriate level for them. And again, because there's so many different courses and entry requirements, it's best to check websites for details. In terms of apprenticeships, um, after GCSEs, then you would be looking at intermediate and advanced apprenticeships. Um, so this is a combination of being employed, um, going out to work for a few days a week and earning a wage, but also working towards a qualification. Um, the National Apprenticeship website has lots of information on this. I'm going to pass you the details of that website a bit later on. So this diagram kind of shows you a bit more clearly the different stages of education and the different levels of qualification. So you can see within secondary education you've got your GCSEs up in the sort of top left hand side and then below that you've got further education so that's college, sixth form um, and intermediate and advanced apprenticeships up to level three. Um, moving over onto the right hand side level four through to level eight this is your higher education so um, um, university routes and higher rates higher level and degree level apprenticeships as an alternative to um, full-time university. So here I've just given you some tips. Um, these are the kind of conversations that we all have in the one-to-one -one sessions with pupils. Um, if they know what they want to do, then it's really good just to kind of, you know, draw out of them some more information about that. What do they know about sort of the pathway that they're 
they would like to take have they looked at the skill sets required and what qualifications they need are they clear on you know what the role entails what they'll be earning what sort of hours they'll need to do and the working conditions um, and also kind of how realistic is it um, in terms of the job opportunities are are there lots of jobs out there in their chosen field or is it a dying kind of industry you know things are moving towards more automation um, so is it is it a job that's going to be affected by the future world of work um, if they don't know what they want to do then that's fine um, it's all right not to know at this age exactly what they want to do that's perfectly fine um, but what we would do is encourage self-awareness here so we would get them to think about their own strengths and their interests and their qualities what are they good at um, what do they feel passionate about what would be important to them in a potential career do they want to travel etc um, how does it link to their subjects what subjects do they enjoy and why are their job roles linked to that that they can take that further um, and then hobbies and interest what what do they do outside what do they love what gets them up and gets them uh, motivated can they link that to the potential sort of pathways of, of work and career ideas? So I hope this presentation has been helpful and it's given you a bit of an overview into the work we do in school. Um, this last page, you've got my contact email address on here. Um, feel free to contact me with any questions relating to careers or progression or work experience, etc. Um, you can check the careers bulletins that are sent out on Google Classroom and Parent Mail. The sign up codes are on this screen for pupils to sign up to the google classrooms if they haven't done that already please get them to do so and then at the bottom there's just you know these are the most used go-to websites that i use in sessions with students i thought i'd share them with you um they're quite user friendly and there's loads of information on there thanks for listening